the all-star app, the number one app in the business, UFC, Bellator, One Championship, PFL, and more. Get the app right now. Link in description. The first thing I want to jump into is uh, your brother was telling me that back in the day, you used to tr go up to Montreal and train at TriStar. Take me back to those times. Yeah, so um, it first started, uh, Zach Makovsky uh, used to train uh, with us at Martinez BJJ. Um, it was during, I forget when it was. I mean, I think I might have just started like as a professional mm -hmm. at the time. And um, he kind of showed up. Uh, we became really, really good friends, uh, really, really close friends uh, between me and my brother, a couple other guys at the gym as well. And um, he always talked about going up there and training. He always went to New York to Marcelo Garcia's as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he took me up there a couple of times. I loved it. I always, I, I always jumped on the uh, bandwagon to go up there to, to, to Marcelo's. Um, but I never really made the jump to go to Montreal when he would go. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of me was like homesick. I wasn't really like a big, big on leaving. Uh, another thing I didn't want to do was like leave like my gym in a way, like even though it was going to be for like a week or so, I still didn't want to be like that guy who like leaves the gym. You know what I mean? Um, but it was prior to my contender series fight, I decided to go. I told myself I was going to go for two weeks. I think I went for like eight or nine days. Um, and it was amazing. I mean, it, it, I knew I knew like one or two guys that were there. Um, I knew uh, Andrew Sanchez who was there and another kid, uh, Mike Ferrante, who is a guy from Baltimore who, who, who fights as well. I think he's at welterweight. So <clears throat> I was comfortable going there as well because I knew Zach and I knew all these other guys. Um, but it was a good time. Uh, the training was very intense. You know, it's good to just kind of like get out of the, uh, the gym that I'm comfortable in and like get new training partners, not really new training partners, but different guys see different looks and stuff like that for the week. Um, but yeah, it was an amazing experience. Uh, I met, I met George St. Pierre. I actually, um, met Elias Theodoro yeah. there and we trained a lot together. Um, and recently he passed and it's, you know, it's a terrible thing, but, um, yeah, he was, he was one of the, one of the guys that I trained with when I was there. Um, but the guys there are, are top tier guys and they're all really, really welcoming. They're really nice. Um, it's a, it's a great, great gym. Uh, it's kind of one of the nitty gritty gyms. So it's kind of dirty and stuff like that, which is how it needs to be. It doesn't need to be all done up and fancy like these, you know, these global gyms are today. Um, but yeah, it was an amazing experience. I went there for a week. I obviously would have liked to have gone back, but the pandemic happened and things kind of fell apart. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how, how it went. I mean, it was good. It was a great experience. And it was just something that I'll always remember. Was GSP fighting still at that time? No. No, at the time he wasn't. He was there just kind of visiting, um, getting some rounds in and stuff. Um, he didn't really train that train with the class or anything like that. He uh, he kind of just went in and kind of did his own thing with his own training partners. Um, and afterwards, Zach pulled him aside and just went like, wanted to introduce him to me. Uh, I actually have a picture. It's me, uh, Drew St. Pierre, uh, Zach, uh, Sanchez. And in the background is uh, Olivier Aubameurcier. And he's doing like this thing, like he's he's stuck in the back of like a cool picture, um, but I think it's on my Instagram. So yeah, it's it's it was it was awesome meeting him. He's a really nice guy, and he's he's just like everybody says he is. He's he's no different on TV or anything like that than he is in person. Yeah, it's uh it's cool to always you know reach out or expand out right and get a little taste of yeah. you know what's out there, and then come yeah. back home and and see that you know home is not that bad either. No, definitely not. <laughs> Especially like being there, like. Nobody really spoke English. They didn't really like kind of, and I didn't really go anywhere. So it was all French and everything. So it was kind of difficult. Like, across the street was like, a little coffee mart that I went to. And then like two, two blocks down was like a little grocery store that I went to like every other day. So uh, it was good. I kind of got the hang of like the money and stuff like that. Um, well, yeah, it was, it's good to experience kind of different things like that. I think. Wasn't it weird that you're going to Canada, but nobody speaks English? Exactly. I thought the same thing. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I'm in Montreal, but everybody's kind of speaking French. It was a little messed up, but I don't know. It is what it is, right? <laughs> now, um, man, speaking of like the contender series, you know, you, you won on the contender series and you won a couple yep. more fights on the regional scene. And then you made your UFC debut during the pandemic in 2020. You know, you were undefeated heading into the UFC. Since then, you know, you've won fights, you've lost fights, you've, you're involved in a no contest, you've had fights canceled, you've pretty much tasted everything the UFC at the highest level has to offer, right? So what were some of the biggest takeaways you think from all that experience? Man, I think I, I've, 
as a as a kid and like growing up through through like high school and stuff like that, I was so used to losing. Like I was so used to it. I had I was like the worst baseball team in my grade school. Like my lacrosse team I played in, we were terrible as well. And <clears throat> um, I was just wasn't. I wasn't big on like the whole sports thing anymore. And like, once I hit high school, I found rest. I found, I found not wrestling. I wrestled for like five days and that was it. I found MMA and, and fell in love with it. And, um, yeah, becoming, getting into the UFC is something and like the build up to it, obviously, you know, as an amateur, I started out, I was five and five as an amateur. And then I progressed on to become nine and zero as a uh, professional, um, to think back to it now, like would I have waited, to get signed to the UFC. Um, maybe, maybe not. I mean, I don't know, depending on like, like if, if I could like see prior, like how my career was going to go in the UFC, then I obviously would have waited a little bit, but no, I mean, it's something that you have to deal with. Like I knew going into the UFC that these guys are the toughest guys in, the, in their divisions. Um, they're guys who take the sport as serious as I do. And, and it shows um, doing, I think just dealing with the losses that I had, uh, in the UFC, it wasn't like too big of a deal. Obviously, it kind it obviously it's a big deal for me, like in itself, because it's your job, right? So it's something that you you need to win. You need to go out there and prove that you belong there. Um, you need to make sure you get those new contracts and whatnot. Um, but I was so comfortable, like like losing prior as an amateur and just like losing like through life earlier that I was just like it wasn't that big of a deal to me. Um, but that being said, you know, obviously losing does suck and whatnot. And the two losses that I had in the UFC to Allen and Hawes, I dealt with like a lot of like just mental stuff. Um, I've always been big on mental, like uh, throughout my earlier career. I kind of got away from that when I started getting like seven, eight, nine and oh. Um, I don't know if it was like the cockiness or just like being like just being like the the, the, the top dog in the in the area, I guess. <clears throat> but I mean, yeah dealing with those losses, I've dealt with like a lot of like depression and stuff like that. After those losses, I dealt with it. Um, it was something that was kind of new because I think the, the magnitude of the fights, even though it was like in the apex and whatnot, um, you deal with things like you, you, you deal with those different, those different things, like people messaging you and just dealing with all that types of stuff. Like that's another thing that that's new that people don't really tell you about is how much social media, like arrogant and idiotic people are when they message you and whatnot. Um, but those fights I dealt with a lot of like anxiety and depression afterwards and whatnot. Um, but after this last one, I didn't deal with anything for some reason. I don't know why, I guess like mentally, I just didn't feel like I fought my last fight. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> as far as like the whole looking at it as a whole, um, it's good. I wouldn't have done it any other way. Like I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change a thing because at the end of the day, when I do get the belt and I do become the champ and whatnot, it'll all be worth it in the end. In your last fight, do you feel like because you were, you were caught, you know I mean, it's a different feeling compared to like, let's say, be out being outperformed throughout three rounds or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I would say so. I like it's hard to explain because I didn't technically like I wasn't like knocked out in a way like I didn't like I didn't like black out after the hit and then like wake up and be like, oh, shit, like what happened? Um, I remember going down. I remember just covering up. You know, I remember as soon as I got hit, like everything from this side over just kind of shifted over. <laughs> and I, Something doesn't feel right. And uh went down i got up I, I i was in the back like like ice in my face waiting for the ambulance to come and whatnot and i was telling my brother and my cornerman i was like dude like i don't even feel like i fought like i literally feel like i walked into the cage broke my face got out and that was it like and i think that that partly that helps in a way because it was so quick and whatnot that like i just kind of blew it off and just shrugged it off and i was like all right whatever like it is what it is i have to deal with the with the repercussions and stuff like that now, but you know, I have to move on eventually and just move forward after this. Now you got Eric Anders, man, a, a, yeah. a collegiate level football player turned fighter, which is always interesting, mm -hmm. right? It, most of the times it hasn't worked out too well. You know, we've seen uh, the whole Greg Hardy situation, right? He's not even in the UFC anymore, but you know, Anders is skilled, you know, he's developed into a good fighter. What do you see in him as, you know, in his skill set, and, you know, just, you know, maybe intangibles. I think he's very good. Obviously, you know, he's, 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 he's had a very long career. Um, I think he's towards the end of his career. Obviously um, he is on a two fight skid, but that's kind of, you know, it's the nature of the beast. You know, on my one fight skid, he's on a two fight skid. Um, this guy is main invented against, I've said this before. He's main invented against Leona Machida, like for five rounds. So <clears throat> I have to respect him in a way. Um, but 
then again, I can't have too much respect because that'll put me, make me kind of soft and, and, and take it easy on him. And I can't do that at all. Um, him being a, a college, college, uh, football player and whatnot, like, I'm not trying to be rude or anything like that, but I think he's just a good athlete. I don't really think he's, he's a top tier, like, like fighter in a way. I think, just think he's a good athlete and that's it. Um, he, he's had a long career. He's had a good, uh, good ups and downs. Um, his ups are, his, his, obviously his ups are very good and his downs are kind of, kind of all the same thing. Like there's submissions and, and decisions and whatnot. Um, and I think that plays, a, plays into my, you know, uh, style in a way. Um, but again, I have to respect him, but I can't put too much respect on him. You know what I mean? His last two fights, he's faced guys that are really, really solid grapplers that have yeah. effective striking. And I kind of see similarities in you with his last two opponents. Do you see the same? Yeah. I mean, uh, against Andre Munez, it was a very quick you know, fight. Um, ideally, that's how I would, I would obviously love this fight to go. But I have to really focus in and really, really showcase my striking this fight. I can't, you know, just go in there and push him up against the cage and try to take him down. That's what he's going to expect. You know what I mean? Um, I don't really think, <clears throat> I know that I've heard some things that he said, keeping receipts on things that he said. So I'll make sure that like he remembers those things come fight night. You know, um, I'm not going to fade. Like he said, I, he seen me, he seen me fade before, but that's on my downs and my lows. You know, I could go out there and say, I've seen him get, you know, finished early and quit in the fight. I've seen him quit in, in multiple fights, but I'm not going to say that because, you know, I'm not being disrespectful or anything like that. I'm trying to be disrespectful towards my opponents or whatnot. But um, the things that he said in the interviews are kind of rubbing me the, the wrong way in a way because he's kind of picking on my lows, you know what I mean? It kind of irritates me. Um, but I have, obviously I have to respect him, but I'm not giving him too much respect. I'm going to go in there and showcase my striking as well. But there are a lot of similarities similarities in his last two opponents that that are similar to me. Um, uh, the Chinese guy that he fought was was very you know grappling heavy as well. They that fight was really really against the cage. Um, but I didn't really watch that fight too much just based off of the fact that he's not a southpaw that he was fighting. I watched a lot of the fights that, of southpaws that he's fighting. Um, Andre Munoz, that was a very good, good fight, good performance for Munoz. And, and, you know, ideally that would be the, the game plan for me, but my game plan isn't, isn't to go in there and strictly take him down and submit him. My game plan is just to go in there and win, win at every aspect of the fight. And, uh, I think this is going to be like a, like a coming out party for me of, of showcasing my striking and, and my whole like MMA as a game as a whole. Anders, you know, he's been known to, to jump up and down from 205 to 185. Do you think that yeah. that can take a toll on the body, you know, fluctuating in weight so much? Um, I mean, maybe if he, if he walks outside of camp too heavy that he can only make 205 or like it's, it's a struggle for him to make 85, then 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 I would assume so. <clears throat> but I mean, I don't think he's had too, he hasn't had really like any like weight cutting issues or anything like that, I don't think. Um, as for like like my like perspective on it, I think you need to be in shape all year round. He seems like a guy who gets out of shape and then needs to get into shape for camp. And then just, I'm, I'm assuming his whole fight camp is solely on his weight cut because he might be so big. I saw him in person um, at the T-Mobile when, when my brother fought uh, Shamil, I think it was. And the, the guy's, a, he's a big guy. You, you can tell he's a football player. Um, but then again, he's he looked like he was kind of out of shape, and I think a lot of these guys get out of shape. I think the same thing with him. Like he has the same thing as uh, Julian Marquez does. These guys get out of shape outside of camp, and that's not something that that needs to be done. That's why they've got to fight at different weight classes every single time. I do think he's had better performances at 205 than he has at 85, even, even though majority of his career has been at 85. Um, but I think his performances are better at 205. It seems like a lot of guys that are, you know. Every guy is skilled, right? But they just yeah. don't perform to their potential because, like you said, that might be the the little, you know, little twist in their their training camp is they're just sitting there trying to lose weight the whole time. Which, you know, yeah. twenty pounds is a huge difference, a huge jump, man, for anybody. Yeah, like like for me, I walk around like now. Ideally, I've I had surgery after this last fight, so I was I've gotten a lot heavier. I got a lot heavier outside of camp, but. That was the first time I've gotten that heavy in a, in a long time. But a lot of these guys like bulk up to not even bulk up; they just get fat and up to like two thirty five that fight at the middleweight, and it's just crazy to me that guys can just occasionally walk around at two thirty, two thirty five, and cut to to eighty five, and 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 still still be the best like performing wise. Like you see, the champ Izzy doesn't walk around. I don't think he's that heavy. 
um, I saw Perhea is like is it, is like two twenty or two thirty or something like that. Like that dude's cutting a ridiculous amount of weight too. Um, but the guys make weight. But then again, you like you said, you don't want to be too focused on you know cutting the weight as opposed to game planning and, and making sure you're doing the right things in the cage. Um, and that's kind of something that like I've thought about <clears throat> and and taken into training and whatnot. Like, I know that I can't be too heavy outside of camp because if not, then my main focus is going to be weight cutting. But that's not why I'm 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 training and fighting. I'm training to be better, a better mixed martial artist. I'm not training to just lose weight. For sure, man. I can't wait for this fight, man. I think it's a solid matchup. And uh, yeah. yeah, Anders has a lot of experience as well. And, and it's, mm. you know, it's an opportunity for both you guys to get back in the win column, which always yeah. creates some some chaos in that cage, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. December third, UFC Orlando. You get to be in front of a crowd, which is an <laughs> incredible, yeah, incredible experience, man. Go out there and show out. If you want to know more about Kyle and and the the event, go download the All Star app in the descriptions. Thank you so much, Kyle. All the best in the fight. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it.